Hey everyone, welcome to Group Text. America's appetite for news about the Fundamentalist Church of Latter-day Saints, also known as the FLDS, appears to be unyielding. And just when I believed I had heard everything, there is still so much more to uncover. Executive producer Lori Golden Stryer shows us that in her gripping new docuseries, The Secrets of Polygamy, which by the way is now on A&E, with new episodes every Monday night. Lori is the CEO of River Media, an Emmy-nominated producer who's been at the forefront, yes, of innovative <laughs> and cutting-edge series for more than, oh, Jesus, 30 years. Okay, let's just get right into The Secrets of Polygamy with Lori golden Stryer. Okay, welcome to Group Text. Thank and you. before we even start, I just want to make sure that we disclose everything. Um... Are you married and do you only have one husband? <laughs> Wait a minute. You know what? Thinking back, <laughs> yes, to the best of my knowledge, 35 <laughs> years in, now have I wanted to replace him occasionally? 100%. By have the way, that's, thought, a dip, yeah. that's a different episode. Okay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully you'll have me back for that. Good. <laughs> okay. Explain to those who don't know who the FLDS are, who Warren Jeffs is, and Sam Bateman, and how polygamy factors into all of this. Like, I need you to cliff note it for those who are not complete and total junkies. <laughs> Good, I'm better at cliff notes. That's how I made it through school. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, it's interesting. I think folks hear about the FLDS, uh, Melissa, and great job pronouncing it all. It's, it's a lot, and I've been doing it for a long time, and I'm still... Um, trying to say later and latter and whatever, but yes, I finally have it down. Um, the FLDS, the Fundamentalist Latter-day Saints, are really an offshoot of, um, of Mormonism. And I think people confuse it and they say, oh, those are Mormons. They're not. The Mormons don't practice polygamy. Polygamy is outlawed. It is against the law. So years and years ago, there was a, a leader, I'm breaking into the cliff note version here, there was a leader of the FLDS, his name- Rulon Jeffs. Look at you knowing everything, my goodness. Yes, in fact, yeah, great job. So there was Rulon Jeffs, and then there was um, Warren Jeffs, who is now serving a life sentence for the crimes he committed. Um, he will never see the light of day. And so Warren Jeffs is in prison, uh, and the sad thing is, one would think Warren has been put away for life for the crimes he committed, egregious crimes, child rape, um, incest. I mean, it's it, there's a litany of, of charges and convictions against him. But now we have a new ruler coming up that you mentioned, Melissa, Sam Bateman. And he is another self-proclaimed prophet who is telling his followers that Warren Jeffs is dead and no longer incarcerated. He's passed away. So now we have an up and coming prophet and uh, who's coming in and committing similar uh, crimes. I should say allegedly because he hasn't really been tried or convicted yet, but he's come in as the self-proclaimed prophet and allegedly um, taking young child brides just as his predecessor did. Okay, uh, so that, was that pretty clear? That uh, was so clear. I'm going to fill in okay. some gaps. So, the uh, FLDS believes that there is a prophet on earth who shares what God is saying and how they should live. So it's like the the cult leader, for lack of a better word. And it's you know Warren Jeffs. I think most people know who he is, and he was the leader, and he create that he followed in his father's footsteps, but he sort of put himself in the position. It's a whole thing. Yes. So, but you, what you uncover really puts a very um, disturbing but simple name to what these crimes are. And and even explaining uh, Warren Jeffs, which is kidnapping, sex trafficking, rape, incest, and forced labor. It's so a lot. right, right. So it's not like these people are just being. It's not sister wives where they have to keep moving, and <laughs> oh, they're victims for their beliefs. No, no, no. This is crazy time. This is crazy time. Well said. Yes, and you know it's interesting that you brought up sister wives because look, I I used to follow what was um, 
big love. Remember when yes. big love was such a big, yes. and it was great. And that was entertainment. That's not the true face of polygamy. And I think, I mean, I shouldn't say that it's that, you know, isn't everybody. I mean, maybe there are certain people that are practicing it and they're living harmoniously. However, the reality of polygamy is that it does breed incest, as you just mentioned, the litany of all these um, egregious crimes. So that that's the reality of it. And again, it's illegal. So it's it's all sorts of wrong. A lot of us remember the big raid when they they the government, the state took yes. down in Texas or in Te- it Warren Jeffs. Yes, that was a huge deal, and the it's it's a very closed community to start with, and they really circled the wagons and went okay. even more almost off the radar. And then suddenly, this guy, Sam Bateman, sees what I perceived as a power, a vacuum, a void. Decides to come in, said, "I'm the new prophet," and people followed him. But the why, and by the way, don't you think, I mean, and these are people who are, 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 they have very strong religious beliefs, but they're not, um, they're not stupid. Don't you think they would know if Warren Jeffs died in prison? You know, it's so funny that you'd say that. I was thinking about this earlier, Melissa. Some of them are so cut off from the world because they're not allowed to have cell phones. They're not allowed to have internet. And they are so brainwashed. And again, this is the only life they've known. It's interesting that you'd say that because going into this, when I first, years ago, when we started shooting a show called Escaping Polygamy, and we would watch these three sisters help people leave these polygamous cults, um, I thought, surely they know this isn't right. And then as I got into it, it occurred to me, they don't know anything but that they were born and raised in these communities and so they don't they don't know and then if they're told that their prophet has been incarcerated of course he's been wrongfully incarcerated and then they're not sure if he's dead or alive some now he Warren Jeffs does stay in touch with some members of the community um and he is actually running the um uh, I don't want to call it a cult uh but he's but but it is yeah but he's running this group from prison um through his son through yes and so now we've got sam bateman coming up who's saying you know what the prophet really isn't alive and i'm the self-proclaimed proclaimed prophet and and they really truly don't know what to believe i, I will tell you, you know just to correct one thing melissa they do now have access more of them have access to cell phones and now more of them are getting online and going Oh, am I allowed to cuss here? Oh, fucking yeah. <laughs> so, good, I can be me. So they're turning around and they're looking at their phones and they're going, oh shit, wait a minute, he's still incarcerated. And if some of them don't know what to believe, but the but many of them are now coming out and that was what escaping polygamy was based on, these folks leaving and finding out that these are truly not men of God. But again, there are still so many that are left in that are true believers. It just, you know, you think you don't think of them as almost living by these Amish rules of no outside influence. Right. So I just, right, I, right. I, I, I just want to reiterate, just so people know, polygamy is not sanctioned by the Mormon Church as well as being illegal. So right. I'm always shocked that the FLDS flaunts what they do. I mean. Why are they why are they waving a carrot and saying, come and get us? Because they, every time they've come in and gotten them, it has not ended well. It's a great point. Right. I, I don't I don't disagree. It's it's crazy, isn't it? You know, and then they um and then a lot of the folks that do wind up leaving Melissa, they're they can't come back. And so they're afraid to leave because if they leave, they're cut off from their families. And so they stay. Um, and it is as much as they're waving that flag in front of me and you, they are so secretive, you know, and it's just, it's, um, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? One of the things that's, that always strikes me, but really struck me in in your, uh, series is how much the, the surrounding town protects them. 
why is why is that so with the FLDS, so many of them now are located in Colorado City, but they're expanding and they're moving to North Dakota and South Dakota. And there's rumors of compounds, more compounds being created. And I think they're often protected because financially they contribute so much to those communities. I mean, they're workers. And so they are out there and they are working. And then, of course, sadly, so many people do turn a blind eye. It you is know, nature. It's sad. And then, yeah, it's terrible. I mean, it's crazy that we all basically know what goes on. There's been enough publicity surrounding it that, and I understand that they contribute financially to the area. It's that's a, that's a tough one to swallow. I mean, what's fascinating to me is two of the main women that you talked to, at least in the first two episodes, because that's all A and E has let me see. <coughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> in advance of this interview, um, these two women were either married to, family of, in-laws of, the actual leaders of yeah. this group. You would think people would listen to them saying, I was in the back rooms, so to speak. I really do know what's happening. Yet, again, the blind eye. But even as someone who's very isolated, you would have to think, maybe they're on to something. But you know what, Melissa, when you think about it also, they, um, they're they one of many. So if, let's say, um, Faith or just any of our, any of the folks that, that you saw, um, if, they, um, if they were married, somehow involved with the prophet, she's one of many, right? I mean, there are other wives. So I think Warren Jeffs had over 70 wives, you know, and they're, and, one or two people come forward isn't a lot when there are 70 some odd others, you know, and then folks don't want to believe. And oftentimes these folks are afraid to come forward. We were very fortunate in the series that so many did, um, you know, and so I, I have to tell you when, when years ago, when we were doing the show escaping polygamy, there was a woman that I always wanted to meet. She was 12 years old when Warren Jeffs married her. And um, her name is Alicia Blackmore, and you'll have to, she's an outstanding young lady who finally in this series did come forward and talk to us. And I mean, her story is amazing what she went through. So anyway, all, all I'm saying is there, there are so many women who are too afraid to come forward. And that's why I so appreciated A&E doing this series and that they took, they, they allowed us to go in and, and get these women to, to talk to us. And I don't know, it just was a great thing. Hopefully by them coming forward now and being on national television and even what you're doing will bring more light to it. You know, there, there's a heartbreaking Thank story about, um, is it faith who gets her children out and the kids don't want to be out. They yeah. literally run away. It's, it's terrible. It, in the middle of the night after which I mean, Pray for her death in front of her. Brainwashed. Brainwashed. And then the pressure also from the other family members. I, I mean, it, I mean, it's it's crazy. I'd never really been exposed to folks who had been so um, poorly, so badly misguided and basically brainwashed until I was doing this series. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this is this really does exist. These folks are frightened. They're um, misguided. Yeah, it's crazy. And now, yeah, the two little ones don't even want to be with her. And what do they know? And they're so little, but they're, they're indoctrinated, right? Right. One of the things you do dive into is the people making the decision to leave their children behind. Yeah. How do they're they make that decision? Do they you really know? believe that they'll be able to get them out when... Yes. Everyone they've seen try and do that fails. Yes, yes, they do. They, they because you, you never think that you're going to be that exception, right? You're the one that's going to go out and you're going to get them. And now, in some cases, um, in one situation, the DHS has the two little girls and she can't get them out, you know, because now there's going to be a trial against Sam Bateman and they're being investigated. So, yes, it's a mess, isn't it? Yeah, I just couldn't imagine having to make that kind of a decision. And don't forget, they've got so many other kids. And then so many of the other kids have also 
have have left, right? Right. And so now they're telling, they're saying, "Mom, come out. It's good. It's safe. You know, and you can get a job. You can get an education. You don't have to be the victim of rape. You know, you don't have to marry your father, your brother, your cousin. You know, and they come out thinking that they that their words will be heard, and I pray that they are. You follow a private investigator who is so fantastic, Matt Browning, as he so tracks great. down these kids, um, even though their parents have gotten out. Again, like we were talking, com- communication is cut off. How does he get notified when Reach there out. is a, a, a victim about to be married to one of the elders? You know, I know they're very involved in the survivor community. But what compels he and his wife to do it? Oh, my gosh. They're amazing people. I mean, what an honor to know them, both he and Tawny. Um, They've got tremendous background in investigation. He was former law enforcement. They're both investigators for the Southern Poverty uh, Law Center. They um, have they shut down one of the largest skinhead organizations in the country. And they have just formed this trust and this bond with these communities, not only the FLDS, but the Kingston group or the order as they're called, the the polygamous um, sect out of Salt Lake. And they have just formed this amazing relationship with these folks. And now they come to Matt and Tawny and Matt and Tawny truly do care, truly are trying to help them. So that relationship is, is priceless. And they're the ones that, you know, of course we follow their investigation into these worlds. And then as it turns out, while we're doing it, and that's what I love about this series, Melissa, is that it's present tense. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all present tense. Holding. It is all present tense. It's crazy. Literally during one of the episodes, I think I can talk about this, but during one of the episodes, they find um, one of the kids that's missing, that has been trafficked. So um, they're just an exceptional couple. Uh, they also just had a book that came out, The Hate Next Door, but that, that wasn't a shameless plug either. I'm just extremely proud of them. And, and they've turned to turn out to be great friends as well. You know, awesome it, people. You talk about trafficking. And as we think of it, <laughs> it's it's trafficking them, these these kids to the outside world. We think of you're, it very differently. It's so Yet, right. That's not what's happening. They're trafficking yeah. within their community. So it's hard to get your head around that that is to actually trafficking. You're right. I know. And and sent off to these compounds. You're right. And then married off. It's I know without their parents permission and some of them. Yeah, it's just awful. So well, let's say you have a husband. Pardon me. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, as I say, obviously you say without their parents permission, but their parents know what they're part of the group. They know what's going to happen. They know what they're doing. And usually it's some sort of an honor. Yes. You know what? You're absolutely right. There's one case. What I was thinking of is that there's um, a, a gentleman who has left the group and he's no longer involved his wife chose to stay in the flds and he's on this search for his children the mother to your point had no problem you know handing over her little ones to marry sam bateman children marrying a a 50 year old man having sex with a 50 year old man because again it's under the guise that it's religion, that it's God, that you're doing this for the prophet and to find a better place in heaven, that if you don't follow these doctrines, then you're damned to hell. Um, and one of the episodes I've already seen, and this again is where I get really con- confused about local law enforcement. They pull over Sam Bateman in his truck and yep. all these girls pop out. He's hauling a trailer. They open the trailer and there's little girls in there. It's crazy here in this country. And uh, that's right. Thank God they pulled him over. Right. Right. But you don't see child protective services stepping in. You don't see any of these higher law enforcement really getting in it. Are they so constrained by what is allowed and what isn't legally that almost the government's hands are tied? I think so, Melissa. And there's so much true, you know, within, and this is a, a, this is sad, but, you know, within 42 minutes, sometimes it's hard for us to tell the whole story. But to answer your question, they are more involved now and the DHS has come in and they are actively 
pursuing charges against him. He is incarcerated, obviously. But um, I feel that from this show and us being out there and you doing what you're doing, I do feel like I have seen more of a reaction, more of a positive response from law enforcement. That also goes for Utah with, with that group of polygamists there, the order slash the Kingston group. So I, I do feel that and I and I, I hope it continues. So again, thank you for what you're doing and bringing light to it as well. So you mentioned earlier about these sort of groups are are popping up all over. How many do we truly know exist and how many do you think are flying under the radar? And and I'm not expecting an exacting number, just you've been involved in this sort of world for a long time. What have you what has your experience been in seeing this this spread? I feel like we're almost discussing what's the show, The Last of Us. The spread. <laughs> you know what? I think there are, that's funny. I think there are several groups. I know there are several groups. I would say no less than five. I mean, the ones that we focused on in this series was, this series was FLDS, um, the Kingston Group, Op- um, a- a- AUB, Apostolic United Brethren. Um, and then, of course, there are a few other groups that we're aware of, um, but I do feel and I that that law enforcement is coming down harder on them. And I also credit that to A and E to you, but also to Matt and Tawny and to our showrunner on this, who's just bringing light to it, especially A A and E that has the balls to do a show like this. Yeah. Truthfully. You know, uh, they're amazing. So yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I got, no, 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 no. So about it. So but something just popped into my head. We know that the Mormon church, the traditional legitimate Mormon church frowns upon this, calls it legal, taking it out of all their doctrine and yes. dogma, everything. They are an extremely wealthy and powerful organization, not just within Utah, but in a number of other states surrounding. Why isn't the Mormon church more involved? They have the resources and the power to get shit done? You know what? I don't know. And it's a great question. I can tell you that when we were there before and these folks that would leave, um, for instance, the Kingston group, the one out of Utah, I know that several times we turned to the um, Mormon church and they did help these folks as far as setting up house and with apartments, they did contribute furnishings and things like that. But I guess your voice it can only be so loud and heard if people take action. So I don't know what they've done on their end, but it truly is up to the government. It is up to is up to law enforcement in the long run. They know what's going on out there. They know, you know. Right. And so, go ahead. I'm sorry. I would say I would think it's actually it's such an embarrassment to the traditional Mormon Church that you would think that they would be squeezing to get get them done, get them out, cut off their resources. Because what people don't realize is these these organizations or these sort of compounds, they're incredibly rich. They are, especially I remember with Warren Jeffs, mind-blowingly wealthy. Mind-blowingly wealthy. And the same applies to the Kingston Group out of Utah. Very wealthy. And there have been allegations that they have people inside government, and maybe that's why. You know, and they are incredibly wealthy and contribute a lot to that community. Um, and again, those allegations of having folks planted in the inside are not new either. So I'm, I'm looking forward for you to see the other episodes coming up because yeah. then that's we'll delve into this a bit more. Um, why are we so fascinated? Why are we so fascinated with these stories? You know what? I think I'm fascinating because it blows my mind that I can't believe that it is going on currently in our country. So that's that's what blows my mind. You know, and I've seen these people living in poverty when I used to fly into Utah and I'd be on a plane and I got bumped up to first class and I'd be sitting there. I'd be sitting next to these members, to these key members of these secret societies, of these polygamous groups, and they're sitting in first class while their women their, their wives, celestial wives, I should say, 
and their children are living in poverty. And it, and it, and it, and so I'm I'm fascinated a that it continues. I think that's why maybe you're fascinated as well because it's it's mind blowing, isn't it? That it is happening in this country. So yeah, I, I'm fascinated by it, but I could do without the fascination if they'd clean it up and make it go away. You know, um, I don't yeah. need. To, yeah, seriously, I'd like to not be able to do a series on this if that makes sense. And you've been working in this space for a long time. Have you gotten threats through the years? Because I have. they are, and you show it in the show. Yes. Fiercely protected to the point of aggressive of their yes. property and their privacy. I can't imagine that they have not made your life incredibly complicated and scary at times. It's scary. Yeah. Thank you for acknowledging that. It has been. Um, and of course, when we're on location and something happens, and I know the same thing happened with our showrunner and our, our co-EP on at Miles Reef, they, you know, the important thing is to keep the cameras rolling. And I guess your greatest form of protection is that footage. Um, but, you know, we, we've had the intimidating letters, the intimidating calls. We've had vans broken into, um, production gear stolen, um, all, all kinds of things. But you keep going, you know, I mean what do you do yeah is it is it unsafe yes at times it is but i i love the result isn't that crazy i i love exposing them if i can be so honest yeah that's that's not i do crazy uh no. what do are you doing i hate to ask this because i'm sure it's a multiple uh it's not a multiple choice but i'm sure there's an answer a b c and d what are you working on next Oh my goodness, you're so sweet. In this, thank you. You mean in this arena? In all of your arenas, because your work is lovely. I, I never like using that word with a documentary, but your your work is it 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 you you walk that fine line of compelling storytelling with staying on tracks with that this is a true story. And sometimes when something's a true story, it's hard to create a narrative because it happens over so much time. You know, you're incredibly nice to even ask that and say such wonderful things about our company. Um, I'm hoping we're working on a lot of different things right now. Our company does everything from um, lifestyle um, to true crime, um, working on something, a big project for A&E um, that I think will be announced soon. I pray we go into a season two because this continues and I and I want to keep exposing it. You know, if that makes sense, Melissa, totally. now. Bateman's going to go to trial. I, I want to cover that. I, I want to be on that, you know, and so I want to I want to continue bringing light to it. So I love the other shows that we do. We're very, very blessed and that we're busy and we do some great production. But I, I love doing the shows that matter. That makes sense. You know, this one does. That really you, matters. That, that's life altering for some folks. If you ever need a, a host for hire, especially for any of your crew, <laughs> true crime things, I'm always available. I hey. I don't necessarily have a reasonable day rate, but I show up prepared and happy to be there. Hey, to me, you're worth every penny. I've watched Ooh. you for so many years, so you're in, baby. By the way, my mother was a huge true crime junkie as well. Your mother was amazing. It's an actual sickness in our family, and people do worry. Um, but at the most important thing is at the end of each episode, there is a website people can visit if they are involved in a polygamous situation of abuse. What does this site offer them and what are the steps they're encouraged to take? Oh my goodness. Yeah. They need to reach out to us and they need, they need to know that there is help out there. There are so many groups um, that, that are looking to help these folks. And so they, they do need to reach out to us that this is not something that's falling on deaf ears, truthfully. And um, good gosh, if Matt and Tawny Browning have anything to do with it, they're going to swoop in there and help these folks, no doubt. Thank you so much. Don't forget The Secrets of Polygamy, now airing on A&E. New episodes <laughs> every Monday at <laughs> 10, 9 central. Thank you so much. You're adorable. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you. 